Hello, welcome back to Rock Records Reviewed. My name's Adam, and this week we're going to take a look at the 11 albums by post-punk pop rock and rollers, The Pretenders. Um, fronted, of course, by legendary singer Chrissy Hind. Um, Chrissy arrived in England from Akron, Ohio in 1973, uh, and she uh, famously did stints at the NME, and she worked in um, Malcolm McLaren and Vivian Westwood's clothes shop. Uh, and she played in various bands alongside people as diverse as Steve Strange uh, from Visage and uh, Filthy Phil Taylor from Motorhead. Um, but in 1978, she found herself in a lineup with uh, drummer Martin Chambers, bassist Pete Farnden, and guitarist James Honeyman Scott. And she named them The Pretenders uh, after the Platter song, The Great Pretender. The band released their debut in 1980. Um, but tragically, after only two albums, uh, Pete Fonden and James Honeyman Scott both died from drug overdoses. Um, Chrissy Hines been the band's only consistent member uh, over their 11 albums so far. Uh, and that does make this kind of a little bit bitty in places, but we'll, we'll do our best to keep abreast of it all. I think at their peak, the Pretenders were real pop rock perfection. Um, so, you know, some of their songs for me, the absolute definition of sort of melodic, jangly guitar music. And at the center of it all, you have this kind of uh, uncompromising, furiously independent Chrissy Hind, who I think is absolutely the real deal and one of the last great rock stars. Um, she, of course, has this instantly recognizable, uh, wonderful singing voice that sounds as good today as it's ever done. I saw them live last year and, and she, she sounded wonderful. I think musically they've probably fallen off the radar a little bit uh, as a band after all the sort of lineup changes over the years and, and admittedly some less than great albums. Um, but Chrissy herself is still very, very much a rock and roll celebrity and hugely well connected uh, and, and respected in, in the music business, not just for her talent, but for her commitment to issues such as veganism and her commitment to rock and roll itself. Um, but let's uh, let's get into it. So 11 albums and uh, at 11 um, from 2016, their 10th album alone. Um, the, the band had been on tour with Stevie Nicks, but when it came uh, time to make a record, they were all given uh, some time off. Um, and Chrissy went into the studio with Dan Olberach of uh, the Black Keys, uh, who produced this album. Um, so really, there's a lot of session players on this record. And, you know, that's just one of my issues with it, really. Um, it, 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 you've got all these players coming in and out. It doesn't quite hold together as a sound for me. And and actually, production wise, it sounds a bit lumpy. Um, it doesn't have that sort of effortless kind of crystalline jangly sound that I love hearing the Pretenders play with. Uh, you know, when you and you have Chrissy Hines' voice just sort of gliding over the music. Now, but I, I guess maybe that's the point, and she was happy to go with something uh, a, a little bit different for a change. Um, but I, I think when you combine it with some songs that I don't think are among her best, um, it makes the whole album a little bit of a disappointment. And really, this is a Chrissy Hind solo album, and you know, I guess hence the title alone. Um, got to number 40 in the UK, uh, 150 in the USA. Um, and, and really, for most of these albums, the US American chart placings uh, are, are not that high, um, which is which is sad for a, a band, let's not forget, that once played Madison Square Garden back in the day at their peak. Um, at number 10, I'm going to put from 1990, their fifth album, Pact. Now, Chrissy herself has said that um, she doesn't like this album that much. And I can see why it kind of sounds like a pastiche of a Pretenders album. The opener, Never Do That, is sort of Pretenders by numbers. And you could argue uh, that it's actually one of the best tracks on here. You've got Billy Cunningham on drums, Billy Bremner from Rock Pile on guitar, John McKenzie plays bass. And all of them at some point had played with Chrissy or been in the Pretenders at some point. But again, this is very much a kind of Chrissy Hines solo album in all but name. Produced by Mitchell Froome, who's worked with some greats like Richard Thompson. Um, uh, and it, it features a song with Johnny Marr, who also had been in the Pretenders uh, uh, live lineup at some point. Um, and there's uh, there's that great uh, Hendrix cover here, um, which is, you know, probably the best thing on here. But it's actually pretty insipid stuff throughout. Uh, it has none of the glorious melodies and the attitudes of their first four albums. 
Um, and Sense of Purpose was a, was a pleasant single, which helped uh, sort of get the album to number 19. But there's no denying this album sort of felt a bit of a backward step at the time. Um, and number nine, the eighth album for 2002, Loose Screw. Um, now, this was the first time ever the band had managed to con keep a consistent lineup for three albums. This has got Martin Chambers on drums, Christian Cross on vocals, Adam Seymour on guitar and Andy Hobson on bass. And, you know, there are some great moments on this album, not least the opener, Lie to Me. She's re she is very good at doing that album opener as Chrissy Hine. Um, Walk Like a Panther, which was the sort of Joe Cocker co-write. Um, that he'd released with, uh, with I think it was all, uh, bow, what were they called? All Seeing Eye, I think, something like that, uh, uh, a few years before. But you know what, this feels a little bit like a sort of, um, a little bit like an Ikea sort of pretenders album. You know, so you've got all the pieces. Here's the rocker, here's the ballad, here's the sort of white reggae track. Uh, and, you know, and you, you can piece it all together and, uh, and you have some, you know, a, a pretenders album. Um it just it doesn't quite hold up over the full record especially you know the over these 12 tracks and actually for the first time for me some of this sort of confessional writing of Chrissy's starts to lag on this one a bit for me um or number eight um from 2008 their ninth album break up the concrete so this was six years they'd had a, a break of six years uh, uh, since loose screw and in that time, um, Chrissy had let Martin Chambers go um, and she'd brought in uh, Jim Keltner on drums, the legendary session player, Jim Keltner. Is there anyone she hasn't played with? Um, so although Chambers came back for the live dates, um, she, I think she, what, she picked the musicians for this record because she wanted to get a sort of rootsy kind of country rockabilly vibe on on this album. That's what she was after. And you've got pedal steel on here and accordions and things. and. And on some of the tracks, actually, it works really, really well. But there is filler again. It's still Chrissy with that voice who's holding it all together and a sheer force of attitude. Um, uh, but, but you know, the album was helped uh, a little bit when it came out because it was released with a, in conjunction with a best of that came out with it, another best of. And that helped get it to number 35 in the UK. But the Break Up the Concrete album itself is, is perfectly pleasant. Um, it's a little bit different as a Pretenders album, but I, it's nothing that's going to change the world. Um, uh, number seven, their 11th and most recent album, Hate for Sale. Um, and there's two key things here. Martin Chambers is back. Um, uh, and this album is produced by Stephen Street, who had worked successfully with The Smiths and The Blur, amongst others. He had done some work with The Pretenders before. Um, but one of the key things here is I think this is it sounds like a band again you've got james warbington on guitar and nick wilkinson on bass and i think chrissy knows that it sounds like a band again hence the cover artwork so you know echoing the band quartet image of the, sort of the first three album covers and it really does sound great it sounds like a pretenders album to me but the good pretenders you know from way back in the day when the music was sort of muscular enough to provide a really decent platform for that voice you know which for the first time in a while to me doesn't sound like it's having to carry the whole thing itself there are a couple of hints or you know all over this that that chrissy hind is really trying to echo past glories or not echo past glories but at least realizes that she's onto a, a good record that just does have that ensemble feel again but you know like i've said particularly the cover echoes that kind of thing but, you know, I'm hearing melodies again on this album. I'm hearing, you know, Chrissy more comfortable than she's been for a long time. And uh, I think all that helped the album go top 30, got to number 29 in the UK. Um, and number six uh, from 1999, the seventh album, Viva El Amor. This again is Hind, Chambers, Hobson and Seymour, co-produced by Stephen Street and Stephen Hague. And there's a guest appearance uh, on here from Jeff Beck as well. Uh, and there's a Divinals cover. Um, the album opens with Popstar. And, uh, I mean, it's sort of slightly oddly thin sound on this record, I think. doesn't quite sound as full as some of the others to me. Um, uh, but but, but Popstar, again, it's a really, really good open. It's one of those great songs that she does very well, where she sort of turns, uh, turns an ironic and witty eye uh, uh, on, uh, in on her own world and, 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 the, and the sort of people around her. 
whole album never quite takes off for me um but but i think again it's not a bad record by any means you know it's 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 it's, it's a really solid record but uh you know there's no denying the appeal of, of of most of the tracks in here and it got to number 32 in the uk and incidentally the uh cover photograph was taken by fellow vegan uh the late lovely linda mccartney um now at number five i'm going to put from 1986 the fourth album get close um now this came at a hard time for the band uh chambers and hind were still getting over the deaths of pete fond and, and james honeyman scott to the point where chrissy hind felt that martin chambers dr uh, drumming was was deteriorating so much that she 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 fired him and she replaced him with just an army of drummers including uh, uh um, mel gainer from simple minds simon phillips famous session player Blair Cunningham, Steve Jordan. Uh, you mean, there's just a host of session players all over this record. It was meant to be produced by Steve Lillywhite, um, uh, but he dropped out and uh, was replaced by Bob Clearmountain and Jimmy Iovine. And they give this album a real proper sort of 80s slick pop sheen. Um, it really does sound like an 80s record. But, you know, there's still some very, very superior recordings and songs on here that rank along some of the Pretender's best work. You've got the beautiful hymn to her. Uh, there's a cracking cover of Jimi Hendrix's Room Full of Mirrors. Um, there's, of course, Don't Get Me Wrong, which is one of their most famous and popular songs. It was a huge hit across the world. But uh, funnily enough, it was originally written with Frank Sinatra in mind. Uh, and when you know it, I can kind of hear Frank singing it with a sort of swing band underneath it. Next time you listen to it, bear that in mind, you'll, you'll get it. It's not a rock album at all. It's kind of a little bit of a sort of funk uh, soul album with a bit of rock. Um, and I think, you know, Chrissy soon disbanded all these session players, knowing that this was not going to work on the road at all. And it was not going to sound like the Pretenders unless she went back to, uh, you know, a proper sort of ensemble, rock and roll ensemble quartet. And, and she readily admits that she lost her muse a little bit after this album. But it, uh, the singles and everything, the success of those songs still helped propel it to number six in the UK. Um, at number four from 1994, uh, their sixth album, uh, The Last of the Independents. Now, I love this album. I, um, I have to admit, I was starting to worry at the time that the well had run dry for, for, for Chrissy Hine. But this, I thought, was a cracking return to form. It's the start of that uh, uh, trio of albums that had uh, Hobson and Seymour on board with Chambers because Martin Chambers was back by now. Um, and you can see why she was keen to keep them from a few albums, even though they still don't. They still don't quite play on everything. She's still tinkering with lineups uh, and session players here and there um, to the point that even Andy Rourke uh, plays uh, from the Smiths uh, plays on uh, quite a few of the songs here. Stephen Street uh, produces it with, uh, with a legendary um, Pretenders producer, Chris Thomas, who, who, who we will talk about a little bit more later. And so the, the sound here, it's crisp and it's full and, uh, you know, and it makes the songs work. You've got the again, a great opener in uh, Hollywood Perfume, Saucy Night in My Veins. She's not afraid of a bit of sauce in her songs, uh, Chrissy. Um, and through to the huge hit, uh, I'll Stand By You, which was, you know, went to number one in, in num many, many countries. Um, it finishes with Bob Dylan's uh, lovely Forever Young. So a lot of this sounds a little bit forced. It, 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 there's a sort of, you know, almost a desperation to get back to sort of past glories, I think. But I, I, I think there's no denying that this is probably the... The, the, the last really good Pretenders album, I think. And I think possibly the public agreed because it was the last album of theirs to get to number t uh, to reach the top 10 in the UK. Um, so these these last three records, I think, are the three essential Pretenders records if, you, if you're looking to get into the band. And number three from 1984, Learning to Crawl, their third album. And this is where I came in, uh, into the Pretenders um, music. Um, at the time, the band was rocked by the deaths of um, Pete Farnden and James Honeyman Scott from drug overdoses. Um, uh, Chrissy Hind recruited Billy Bremner from Rock Pile and Tony Butler from Big Country to play on a new song she had written called Back on the Chain Gang, which came out in 1982. Um, but it was to be over a year before she actually settled on a lineup that she felt could make an album. 
uh, and that was with um, Robbie McIntosh on guitar and Malcolm Foster on uh, guitar um, and this album Learning to Crawl had every right to be you know an emotional mess of a record but instead it's a real triumph um, it's one of the band's very very best albums and it's chock full of great songs and great performances it opens with the rollicking middle of the road which has fantastic Martin Chambers you know uh, just bashing the heck out of the drums it's got a fabulous uh, dirty blues harp solo from Chrissy uh, in the middle and uh, it's got this great great guitar solo by Robbie McIntosh solo I have to admit I've ripped off many many times myself um, it really doesn't sound like a band in mourning in fact it sounds like a bad def it's it's defiant stuff and a real indication of the kind of character Chrissy Hind is Back on the Chain Gang made it onto this record and of course is an absolute radio classic as is the fabulous 2000 Miles which we covered in the Christmas show I think it's one of the best Christmas songs of them all but you've also got Thin Line Between Love and Hate Thumbelina My City Was Gone Show Me there's no filler here just really really great songwriting um, and, and that voice of course and, uh, and sonically it's very much in keeping with the band's first two albums um, no surprises because it's produced by Chris Thomas and the album got to number 11 in the UK charts and number five in the USA where it went platinum and at this point in the States the uh, the pretenders were a, a big deal um uh, so the top two albums so I'm sure you, you can probably guess what they are uh, at number two is pretenders 2 from 1981 um, after huge success of their first album, um, the, the, as always, the record company, Sire, was desperate for more material. Um, but there wasn't a, a, enough material to sort of make a record. So the band put out an EP uh, as, as a sort of interim offering, and that had Talk of the Town and Message of Love on it. Great songs that did actually end up on Pretenders 2. Um, now, despite increasing sort of drug related issues with Pete Farn and James Honeyman Scott, in fact, Pete Farn was fired after this album. And, and, and that's it, it's said that that's kind of what precipitated all the sort of tragedy that happened afterwards. But no one really knows for sure. Um, but this album is another slice of just perfect post punk guitar pop rock. Uh, you know, and again, there's no filler here. It's just it's, you know, day after day, uh, the adulteress. Um, there's a great cover of the Kinks' "I Go to Sleep," uh, and some of you may know that Chrissy Hind went out with um, uh, Ray Davis, and they had a child together. Um, the album was criticised at the time for being a bit of a carbon copy of the debut album, and in some ways it is. But I think again, the strength of the record is just undeniable. And over time, people have reassessed this record and gone back to it, and a lot of people actually think it's the pretender's best record once again it sounds splendid nobody can find a jangly guitar groove like chris thomas um it went got to number seven in the uk 10 in the usa and actually got to 403 on colin larkin's um all-time top 1000 albums uh, but all of that brings us to uh, my my favorite pretenders album and i do think the best pretenders album and that is of course their debut uh, pretenders from 1980 Chrissy Hind, as I said earlier, she'd come over uh, from the States and, but, you know, she wanted desperately to be a, um, a, a, a pop star, a rock, a rock and roller. Um, she writes very well about this in her fabulous autobiography, Reckless. Uh, but she was always on the periphery. She was never quite uh, she was on the out, always on the outside looking in. Uh, but she talked a good game to the point where uh, the Clash and the Pistols thought of her as some mouthy yank. It wasn't until Lemmy uh, sat her down and gave her a real put up or shut up lecture that she got her act together and uh, put the pretenders together with Honeyman Scott Chambers and Pete Farnden. Now, I've talked about this album before uh, in my debut show. I really feel it's one of the great debut albums of them all. We talked about Chrissy Hind in detail before as well on my Women in Rock show. You know, her intelligence and her attitude, those things that make her such an uncompromising proposition. And on this album, she just gets the opportunity and she picks up the ball, she runs with it. So we start with the furious, sexy opener, Precious. Uh, uh, but it just, there's no let up after that. There are great grooves and beats all over this album. Tattooed Love Boys, The Weight. 
um, mystery achievement, which I love. Um, and alongside those great songs, you have absolutely peerless um, uh, singles like uh, Brass in Pocket and Kid, of course, with its magical James Honeyman Scott guitar solo. Um, there's another cover. Um, uh, there's a great, great cover of the Kink Stop Your Sobbing, which was actually one of the first things recorded for this album and produced by Nick Lowe. Um, the band hits its groove immediately on this record and they maintain it maintain it all the way throughout particularly James Honeyman Scott who it's, it's tragic I think that he died so young because I really think he could have gone on to be one of the great guitarists um, had, he, had he not left us so early the album got to number one in the UK it went platinum in the USA uh, it got to number 52 on VH1's greatest albums of all time it got to number 152 on Rolling Stone's greatest albums of all time and to this day it's 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 still a very very highly regarded and influential album that um, that just it just had to be top of my list and probably is top of yours as well I suspect if not let me know um, so what else of Chrissy Hind uh, uh, away from the pretenders? Well, um, uh, I mean, uh, th there are a couple of sort of very listenable live albums you can find online. Um, they did an uh, she did an acoustic uh, live album called Isle of View, which for me just wasn't really the pretenders as I as I know and love them. But it's 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 listener it was very nice and pleasant. Um, she did a solo album called Stockholm, um, and then she, which was okay, uh, and possibly should have been on this list because it's no lesser Pretenders album than some of these, but it, you know, it wasn't called Pretenders album. But then she also did a very interesting record um, with a jazz band Valve Bone Woe, uh, which had some covers on it, and and it's very, that's a very enjoyable listen. Her voice sounds great on it. And in my opinion, Chrissy is absolutely at her best when she feels she has a band around her, uh, when she's collaborating. Um, you know, I think she really is one of the great collaborators out there. And she's worked with people as diverse as, uh, as, as, as diverse as UB40 to Neil Young to, um, to Frank Sinatra to, to John McEnroe. Uh, and if you look at the list of people she's worked with, it's 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 da it's dazzling. Um, I think when she feels she has a band around her is when she's at her absolute best, because I think that's the best platform for her identity and the and the, and the, and the image she projects and feels most comfortable with. Um, so you know, I think she's absolutely one off. I admire her uh, and and respect her tremendously, and I, th I think we all should. I, I think she's just one of those characters you can't help but think, yeah, good on you. You know, you've um, you you're you're good. At, uh, what's the phrase I'm looking for? I don't know. What, anyway, good on you. Anyway, um, but look, that is my um pretenders list for this week. Um, and uh, if you don't agree with me, let me know. Um, I'm sure you agree with me on the first few albums here, but the rest of the records, it does like it gets a bit murky here and there. Um, I'll be back very soon with another Rock Records reviewed. Until then, thanks for watching. Bye bye. Rock,